Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. <laughs> Live from Boston, Massachusetts, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to Bean Town. We're in Boston. Oh, Very yeah. historic city, Kastuba. Historic? Yeah. A lot of yeah. American history started there. A lot there, of right? American history stuff here going on. My dad used to take me to, to historic. Yeah, a little to family teach you about trips. history? Really? Yeah, you went to the boat where they threw the tea. You know, they had the Boston Tea, tea party. party, and uh, I've never seen that. Oh yeah, this is the crazy. boat is there. Well, it might be a replica. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> you get to throw for a few extra dollars. You get to throw like a crate of tea off the boat, and then they pull it back, and you get to do it again. All right, makes you feel like you're boycotting England. <laughs> Makes you feel special. Sorry to all our everyone's, everyone's British got a little listeners. Bit of that, that rebelliousness in them, right? They want to play it out yeah. a little. Yeah, play that out. Next week, I'll go to England where I'll uh, wave a fist down. at the Americans. <laughs> where will you will well, bow down <laughs> in submission? This is where the Americans took off and betrayed us. Everyone's got a different narrative, isn't it, in the material world? Oh, yeah, that's true. I can go that way. Today's welcome, everybody. Today's questions and answers day. In. Uh, wisdom of the sages it's where people write in questions and we try our best to um, give give a reasonably good answer from in the same way the Bhagavatam would give an answer from our studies this is uh, Mara she compiles all the questions she's over on my right and um, if you want to write Mara with a question you write wisdom of the sages 108 at gmail.com and then we'll they'll be put in the file and we'll pull them out in, a, in accordance to sort of when they came in and uh, yeah, but before we get into that, uh, any announcements, Miss Mara? Do, do, do. There she is. The microphone. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, we have back to your recovery group meetings today at 9 30, 11, and 12 30. And we're doing QA day again tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern time. Two days of QA. We're going to be in Boston both days. I'm, I'm going to be at um, Back Bay Yoga Union today, and then also at 2 o'clock doing a book signing and q a at bridge nine records in beverly massachusetts the place to do that would have been uh that newberry comics isn't that the, the place i went in there yesterday they didn't have my book oh you know what that? they have they have lots of graphic novels lots okay. of comic books i want to do a graphic novel world now I, I you know what i was looking about graphic novels i said like, there's not that many words in graphic novels it's mainly graphics yeah that's heavy on the graphic lighter on the heavy on the graphics like Little that's why that's why I wanted to write a novel, but then I said, you know what? I do a graphic novel because it's so hard to convey emotion. You could write it over a cup of coffee. There's so little. <laughs> no, but so... it's still, no, but Ragnar, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's easy. Well, what I'm saying is there's not that many words, even per page. There's not that many but, but words. But every frame has to be carefully considered. Yes, but I'm saying it's easy to write because there's not many words. Nah, it's you see, of, that's a lot point. of art. It's not easy. It's not easy. That's my point. Just because there are not a lot of words doesn't mean that it's easy. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
No, it's, I read up on it. I did quite a bit of study on it. Did you on graphic yeah. novels? I got I got the important it's a whole books thing. It. It's like a it's yeah. like a whole genre. I got a story and I got a great artist. So, uh, but it's, isn't it only certain types of people read graphic novels? Like certain type of like a lot of people on nerdy kids. No, no, a lot of people get into graphic novels nowadays. Mm-hmm. It's not okay. just it's not just like something for kids. It's like it's a mature art form now. You know, it's like people. It is, but it's a type of person that reads them. I'm saying. It's a, well, maybe people will get into it after Costuba writes it. Yes, that. <laughs> right. Anyway, anyways, there's, there's there's an audience out there, and there's a large audience that reads them for sure. We well, we were looking in Trident Books and um, Newberry Comics for styles Beautiful. of Wisdom of the Sages cookbooks that Mara's working. Oh, on. good idea. So we're trying to look at like should they be this big or that big or this big? Yeah, so we're excited about the Wisdom of the Sages. Rogenoth went in, into a place called Newberry Comics. And came up with this discovery. There's a lot of graphic novels in here. <laughs> yeah, well, it's called Newberry Comics. <laughs> I was never a comic kid. I wasn't either. I don't know anybody who was, truthfully. Oh, by the way, my, your mic, I think, needs to be turned up a little bit. Right? The last couple of days have been quiet. Just a little bit. Room. Got you. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's dive into questions, Q&A. Was there more announcements to make? Or we got it all. That's it. Yeah. Our, our India things. People signing up for India. Looking forward to that. India great, with great. me and Kastuba and Mara. In October, check out my website, uh, raghunath.yoga. Raghunath. Yeah. And Nepal, uh, right afterwards. That's filling up, too. We're going to okay. trek through the mountains of Nepal. Exciting. All right, let's just start right. This is from our Discord thread. We have sort of, we're guess what? We're consolidating all our different ways to reach people. We have WhatsApp groups. We have Discord thread. We have email. We have Telegram. We have so many. Whenever we have to cancel we'll a show. Consolidate. We got Mayor on so many platforms. We are consolidating when this new platform comes around. We're excited for it. We're getting close now, I think. We're getting closer. And we have some really beautiful Savites working on it. I want to thank them for that. Um but this is from a Discord thread, and it's from Michael on 419. On page 75, this is great. He goes right to Nectar Devotion. On page 75 in the Nectar Devotion. What is the Nectar Devotion? We better talk about So that. the Nectar Devotion is um, a work of Rupa Goswami. He's one of the uh, disciples of Lord Chaitanya, who was sent to Vrindavan to uh, discover holy places and to really start to compile um, the Bhakti Shastras, which is taking the essence out of all the Vedic teachings of Bhakti and compile them into literature. Yeah. And um, and the and the Nectar of Devotion is sort of like a express train of how to develop Krishna Bhakti. Uh, actually, his book, the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, is, and the Nectar of Devotion is Prabhupada sort of going through all those texts and weaving in purports to make it a readable. Yeah. It's book. a summary, kind of a summary. It's a summary study of it, yeah. Okay. Um, but it has really well, interesting important, things on Krishna Bhakti. Historically, very important. Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu is a very important text. And so Prabhupada, early in, early in his, like when he came to America, he started producing all these books, and he put that one out early because he knew it was such an important text, right? Because he didn't know how long he was going to live. He made sure. sure that we had his version of the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which is called the Nectar Devotion. Okay. So it says on page 75 of this book in the section called Dancing Before the Deity. A few quotes are provided about the benefits of dancing before Krishna. Here's one example. Quote, a person who is in a jubilant spirit who feels profound devotional ecstasy while dancing before Krishna and who manifests different features of bodily expression I was, I was, I was, I was making different features today Careful. in the mirror like this. <laughs> no, not like that. <laughs> well, you don't know. No, I think what it means there is your hair. Dancing before Krishna who manifests different features of bodily expression. Hair standing on end, tears coming from the eyes, voice choking up. I assume yeah, but you could be funny. making faces. <laughs> yeah. I'm... Features of bodily expression can burn away. Yeah. All of the accumulated sinful reactions he stocked up for many many, many thousands of years. Isn't that interesting? Is we're that talking about that very... just yesterday on the show, weren't we? We're talking about, Prahlad was talking about this. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's like here, it is an express train to love of God. And it, it, it's this um, special uh, gift we have in Kali Yuga, uh, like, like a catapult to love of God. And you might not even get it. You might get like sucked into a kirtan. You could go visit at a Sunday feast and everyone's dancing and someone grabs you by the wrist. And next thing you know, you're dancing. But if you think about the lifetimes of bad karma we have, of crazy things that we've done, it starts to get burned away. Your karma starts to change. Mm-hmm. And now the, the 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 question, the questioner says, I've been attending Kirtan at my local ISKCON center where Temple. we spend time dancing in front of the deities. But I'm wondering if deity includes pictures or statues of Krishna one owns that haven't been blessed or went through what special blessing or procedure image on images on more official altars. I've had it done to them. Let's I, try I, that I guess again. It, I guess the idea is, it, it, okay, you have a regular installed deity at a temple, or do you get that benefit dancing to a picture of K- Krishna? Yeah, more official altars. He's kind of he doesn't really have the right word. More dot 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 official altars. Yeah. I guess so, so essentially, what the question is is he's saying in this in this ancient text on Bhakti, saying if if in the temple you're dancing for the deity, um, all these wonderful effects are there. Does that also apply if you're not like in a, a temple where the deity hasn't been installed through the official rituals that a, a temple and that a deity in a temple is established mm. by? Do you still get that same benefit? All right, Robert, what do you think? My my answer to this would be um, depending on your consciousness, mm. depending on your consciousness. Um, it's almost hard to measure these things. And also, we're not out to sort of just burn our karma. We're out to find love of God. So if this is like, if this is touching our heart and making us more attracted to Krishna, that's all we should really be caring about. I was like, man, I, I danced in front of a picture and I only burned a hundred births away of bad karma. I, mean, I got to go to official deity so I can burn a thousand births of bad karma. I don't think we look at it like that. It's 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 making these very loud statements to understand the importance of enthusiasm when seeing Krishna, uh, and that could be the form of a picture or a deity. But in that enthusiasm and excitement to see Krishna, we're cultivating a consciousness and a mind and a heart that's connecting with Krishna as my Lord, as my love. And I think that's an important um, takeaway from that statement. Not that like, oh yeah, man, I got. I got some. I I did some horrible things, you know, when I was a kid. I got to go dance in front of the deities. We're not looking at like a, like we're trying to um, at some Turkish market, you know, bargaining with uh, God. <laughs> Turkish market, a, Tur- <laughs> a Turkish street market. Okay. Yeah. What do you yeah. think? No, I I agree with you, Raghunath. I think um, the consciousness is the important thing here. Let's let's zoom out a little bit. And try to put all this in context, right? Because, like, what is the nectar devotion? What is the bhakti rasam What What's being expressed here, and why? And you know, um, early on in that text, um, Rupa Goswami, he it's 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 he has this style of writing. It's not a, a style that's uncommon within yogic texts, where the author makes a point. And in this tradition, you don't just make a point. Like, like if you pick, if you go into a bookstore and a Barnes and Noble or whatever right now and pick up a book on like self, if you go to the self help section, there's all these authors that are trying to tell you how you can make your life better, right? Sure. And they're just saying, this is what I've realized about life, and here you go. In the yoga tradition, in the bhakti tradition, that's not how they operate. No, you don't just say, this is what I think because I'm quite enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> no, they say this is what these ancient texts say. This is this this is what these sacred texts say. Let me let me highlight some aspects of that for you and and put them in context for you so that they'll be relevant in your own life. That's kind of what the that's interesting. The method, right? Inter- on a side score, I'll cost you a bit. It's interesting that a lot of the self help gurus will borrow things from ancient texts or ancient traditions, but they'll make yeah. it their own and claim ownership to those things. Yeah, they do that. Or even if they even if they don't know they're doing that, really this wisdom is kind of coming from there. You can if it's real and authentic, you're going to be able to find it there first, you know. 
Exactly. That's called that's called cultural appropriation when you're taking the credit um, for all those things. Okay. That's not a good when point, you're not when you're good. highlighting it. Not right. when you're highlighting it and, and glorifying yeah. a tradition of wisdom. Good point. That's what people accuse yoga of, of you and me of are you cultural appropriate. <laughs> you have no right to say anything about Vedic wisdom because you're a stupid white male. <laughs> Okay. Let's all kick Kostuba today because he's a white male. No. Hey, if I'm half if Hispanic, cool, okay? If you're Give Hispanic. Me, cut me some slack. Um, but so, the idea okay. is that, yeah, no, we're glorifying the tradition. We're right. appreciating the tradition. Right. We're not taking the credit for it. That's right. It's okay. the wisdom of the sages. And it's a, it's an, it's not only like an Indian tradition. It's a, it's a, it's a tradition that goes beyond. It's universal and beyond this universe. It's like, okay. So here's the point. So Rupa Goswami wants to describe what is bhakti, how is it practiced? And he's speaking about sadhana bhakti, right? Which he defines as it's engaging the senses in the service of Krishna. That's how we practice this, right? And, um, and, and but why? Why do you want to engage the senses in the service of Krishna? All of it, he's going to say, is to bring the mind to Krishna somehow or other. We need to get our awareness. To, to, our awareness has been captured. It's been stolen by Krishna's external energy. Actually, this goes to question number two when we get there. The, 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 the external energy, the, the energy that tends to be illusory, the, the, the energy that tends to take us away from truth, understanding who we are, understanding what our nature is, understanding what we need to be happy. We tend to get caught up in that. We're looking outside for these things. Now, sadhana bhakti is about bringing the mind somehow or other to the reality and to the source of all reality, to the root of all reality, to Krishna, right? So in order to establish that point, Rupa Goswami doesn't just say it, then he's going to say, it's not me that's saying it, we can go to these sacred texts that say it. So then he quotes Srimad Bhagavatam, okay? And, he's, and he quotes this, he says, Narada Muni, great authority, right? Mm. Narada Muni mentions this sadhana bhakti in Srimad Bhagavatam, 7th canto, 1st chapter, verse 32. He says there to King Yudhishthir, My dear king, one has to fix his mind on Krishna by any means. <laughs> okay, that's like, find a way to do it. Get the mind there. And then Prabhupada uh, writes, this is called Krishna consciousness. It is the duty of the acharya, the spiritual master, to find ways and means for his disciple to fix his mind on Krishna, that is the beginning of sadhana bhakti. You know, we're gonna, you and I have been talking about this, right? This is real important. You see, what's gonna follow in the in the nectar devotion and the bhakti rasamrita Sindhu a few chapters down is he's gonna list sixty four different ways to practice sadhana bhakti, right? Mm. Sixty four mm. practices. He's gonna list them. That is there so the guru or the acharya can help the disciple saying, okay, somehow or another, we got to get your mind focused on Krishna, right? Here's 64 ways we could do that. You know? pretty, yeah, it's so scientific and it really works. Science. It yeah. really works. Well, I'll tell you how, how, how the proof of that, Ron. Prabhupada, when he's established all his different temples, he established a program that the, that the people living in the temple, the practitioners of bhakti living in the temple would follow there was a morning program. There was an evening program. Right? If you look at the morning program, practically every one of these 64 items of devotional service is squeezed into it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? it's quite amazing. It wasn't yeah. just like a random thing. Okay, now we're going to worship Tulsi. Now yeah. we're going to have a guru. No, no, no. It's actually right specifically, yeah. it's, truthfully, it's like what we do when we take people on pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. It's not just random, like, let's go sightseeing to holy places. It is the senses are all engaged. That's right. And when the senses are engaged in a higher, right? Just like if you eat something very sweet, then if you eat something less sweet, you can't even taste the less sweet thing. Right. In the same way in, in bhakti, when your senses go to very high versions of sense enjoyment through bhakti, because we're, we're actually not cutting our senses off. It's just like uh, the senses are connected to love of God. Yeah. It, it, it creates a different impression in the mind. like. We are asked to dance. We're ordered to dance. Nanda Chandra wrote on the message board. Um, we are asked to dance out of duty. Mm. 
in the beginning yeah it's like in the beginning duty. because yeah. sometimes you're like well what do i do here and we dancing at a <laughs> dance but some yeah. of my fondest memories are oh. and, and something happens when you dance something happens with your heart and with your mind and with the song that goes with the dance you're hearing songs and you're seeing the the form of the lord and you're smelling the incense burning and the smell of the tulsi burning and your hands touching the 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 lamp and the scent of the lamp and the feeling of the lamp it's a complete sensual activity yes sensual but, sense, but it's sensory you, yeah. sensory but it's bringing you those senses are, and now you could be just walking somewhere and you could smell some incense. This happened the other day. I smelled some incense and it brought me back to that place. It brought me right back to being in a temple, being in a holy I know place. Those feelings, yeah, you yeah. know that feeling? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or the smell of Prashad. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I, I went to the Brooklyn temple recently. I walked in the temple room and I was like, <laughs> It smells exactly the way it smelled, it smelled you yeah. know, uh, 40 years ago, when and, I walked, 35 years ago when I walked in there. And we're creating these anchors to bring us to places, anchors when times are tough, because it's not like we're living in the temple our whole life. You and I live in the temple for, you know, even though we lived there for a while, it was only a few years in the greater portion of our life. Yeah. So when times get tough in the material world, we have these anchors to go back on the feeling of what, how free it is to dance in front of the deities. Yeah. The, the freedom of sitting with friends and sharing Prashad or serving Prashad to someone mm -hmm. else, someone handing you Tulsi and the smelling of the Tulsi dancing in Kirtan, oh. sort of aloof to public this, opinion. This is great. We're going to, what you're describing is the, the purpose of this temple mm -hmm. is to give us the opportunity to engage the senses in devotional service to practice sadhana bhakti, right? And 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 I liked wh where you went with this because Prop what Prop when he over here, Ragnar, over, over here. here. <laughs> 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 so so uh, when um, Prop in, in the in the second chapter of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu or Nectar Devotion, um, this sadhana bhakti is defined you know, as engaging the senses in, in, in the service of Krishna. And Prabhupada writes there, he says, he, he's, he, he wants to make it clear that what we're doing through that practice is we're uncovering something that's already within us, right? So he says, pra Prabhupada writes this, practice means employing both the mind and the senses in practical devotional service, these 64 items, right? Mm. The, this practice is not for developing something artificial. For example, a child learns... Uh, you know what I'm going to say, Raga? Yeah, this is a great analogy. I use this analogy all the time. Exactly. Child learns how to walk. Exactly. Right? When the parents yeah. sort of like, here, hold my pinkies. The but walking. Kind of in the child. Yeah. The walking, um, what's the word? Is inherent. Proclivity yeah. is built in the child. It's not like yes. the. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. Not, so, it's something fake. Bhakti is inherent in the soul. That's right. If you ask the kid to do some bizarre dance or something like that, that might be like artificial, but the walking you, is right there you in teach the kid. Them, you, you have to teach them separately, <laughs> but walking yeah. is, that's normal. So he says, for example, a child learns or practices to walk. This walking is not unnatural. The walking capacity is there originally in the child and simply by a little practice, he walks very nicely. Mm. Similarly, Devotional service to the Supreme Lord is the natural instinct of every living entity. Even uncivilized men, like the Aborigines, offer their respectful obeisances to something wonderful exhibited in nature's law. And they appreciate that behind some wonderful exhibition or action, there is something supreme. So this consciousness, though lying dormant in those who are materially contaminated, that's us, the ones that need to do this practice, right? Mm. is found in every living entity and when purified this is called krishna consciousness so the so so the idea is that a guru an acharya a teacher could take this text understanding okay i get it we need to engage our senses in order to bring our mind to mm. krishna and when we bring the mind to krishna then this dormant capacity to love krishna or bhava it arises right so sadhana bhakti leads to bhava bhakti it's it's you know and ultimately to prema bhakti so so um okay so that's there so then later on you go a few chapters down in the book and it's going to list these 64 items and one of the 64 items is the one that michael has drawn our attention to today which is has to do with dancing before the d okay Can I, I have to insert something yeah sorry 
uh, it has to do with the first point you made that 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 it, proclivity <laughs> squirrel that proclivity to worship is there and if you don't worship the personality of godhead that's okay notice a child will put something some poster of some superhero some sports star is i was there. i was just with um you know the editors of mandala and and part of their side business is this thing called sideshow and sideshow they create deities or forms of uh, Star Wars figures, or okay. um, you because know, some the type of like liberty is there. Yeah, and 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 I was like, who buys these figures? Sometimes they're life size figures, and they're super expensive. You can buy Darth Vader, or buy, you know, they'll do all these characters from movies or horror movies or things like that. Luke Skywalker, he's like, yeah, people buy them all over the world. They buy them, oh, and they're yeah. sort of like deities in their home. And they sort of like <laughs> respect the archetype of that being. Like this one's a little crazy. On this one's wild. This one's powerful. This one's pious. Mm -hmm. There is a there's a desire inherent to worship something stronger, more powerful than yourself. You to respect and if you don't it, to do honor it, it. Yeah. If you don't do it in Radha Krishna or Sitra and Ram or Lord Shiva, you're going to do it in some other <laughs> thing of this world. Wolverine. Even if it's your dog. Even if it's your dog. Okay. What do they call them now? The dogs on the planes? Therapy dogs. Everyone's got a therapy dog now. That's their deity, their uh -huh. therapy. But you can talk to your deity like your therapy dog. <laughs> okay, you okay. can say, how are you, Krishna, today? How are you? Think about it. That's how you get close to your deity. To talk to him like that. Are you okay? Here's what I'm doing today. But people do that with their dogs. Okay. So, so thank you for that, Raghunath. That contribution. Okay, so going on now, the yeah. dancing part. Okay, so it's saying dancing before the deity in the temple. This is an instruction that a guru could give to a disciple to help them practice sadhana bhakti for the purpose of bringing their mind to Krishna in order to awaken bhava, love for mm. Krishna within them. Okay, that's that's the science. That's the idea of how it works. And he gave this interesting quote. So in order to establish that point, again, Rupa Goswami is not going to just say, this is my idea. He's going to go to the Puranas. He's going to go to the different texts on this that will and share a quote there to establish his point. So one of the points he shared here in the question, a person who's, who's in jubilant spirit dances before the deity, all this karma is being burned away, right? Burn, baby, burn. And, the, and then, uh, and, and, and he gives a second one. I'll, I'll read that one too, because it's a great one. Karma inferno. He says, um, in the same book, there's a statement by Narda. Oh, this is from the Dwarka Mahatmya. He's quoting the Dwarka Mahatmya. Dwarka Mahatmya. That's the glorification of Dwarka. Okay. Yeah. Um, and he says in the same book, there's a, a, a statement by Narda wherein he states, from the body of any person who claps and dances before the deity, showing manifestations of ecstasy, that's bhava, right? All the birds of sinful activities fly away upward. Then Prabhupada writes, just as by clapping the hands, one can cause many birds to fly away, right? People do that. Yeah, yeah, do it all the time. Just as by clapping the hands, one can cause many birds to fly away. Similarly, the birds of all of our bad karma, which are sitting in the body, you know, they're like seeds there. They can sure. be made to fly away simply by clapping before the deity of Krishna. So. Two, two, um, two, two arguments, you could say, two presentations were made there to, to substantiate what Rupa Goswami was saying, that this dancing before the deity is a very powerful method of yoga, right? It, it's it's, it's, it's going to relieve you of, of you, here's, this is, this is an important point, Rona. Tell me, tell me. Is, is that the, the way that the practicing bhakti yogi is doing this is, is not, this idea of becoming free from our bad karma, or mm -hmm. in more religious language, you say is becoming free from your sin, right? Because sin, we say sin, sin can mean the action that you do that's sinful. Yeah. But sin also means the reaction that you have to coming from it, you know, like the, the, what comes yeah. from it. And, and people that think on the religious level or in, the, the Vedic or yoga paradigm would say on the karmic level, their mind is concerned with, I want to enjoy and be happy in this world. And if my 
bad karma, if my previous bad actions are going to bring suffering to me, I need to think about how I'm going to deal with that. Mm. And so just as the Christian might think, my sin is going to cause me to have to go to hell, I need to do something about it. this counteracting of sin is a lower level kind of spiritual thought. Yeah, uh, you're bargaining, um, you're bargaining with God. You're, yeah, you're just like saying you're it's a self it's a type of self selfishness, you know, you're just concerned about my own experience. You're not responding with love, you're kind of like help me out of my suffering here. Here. I'll do this many prayers, this many mantras, this many rosaries yeah. if you let me off for that time I stole from uh, <laughs> stole from work. Okay. And they yeah. do that. They do that in they do that in within Hinduism and it's, it's all, all over those Hinduism. different traditions. It's and, all over and, Buddhism. It's, it's everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah. You're you're trying to counteract some bad karma you know is coming. That's right. Okay. So so when when someone picks up when a, a an acharya, when a guru in in the in the practice of bhakti yoga is picking up the bhakti rasamrita sindhu, the nectar devotion and and, and prescribing, right? Pre prescribing these 64 activities or some of these 64 activities for the disciple, they're not doing it with that motive. When it's, so it's when it's saying like all the bad karma is flying away. It's not the idea that now you can enjoy the world because your bad karma is gone. You know what? what? I like the way you're presenting this. We said the same thing. We're coming from the same yeah, angle. That's I'm telling you, right? That's right. That's right. We're thinking the same. <laughs> what a right day, my man. <laughs> so so um the reason why the guru wants the disciple to become free of their bad karma is because it's going to lighten their load in their effort to bring their mind to krishna and oh, feel that's that a nice love way to put it. It. that's a nice way to put it okay yeah when our when our mind is heavy it's hard to find love of god because yeah. we've got so many other things pulling us around yeah and so we're going to counter that in every way we can we're going to and that's now let's talk about the temple Right, because like, what is the temple and what is the purpose? It's a lot of times because people, because there's people that aren't so deep in terms of the spiritual thought, and then there's people that come a little deeper. And when they get a little deeper, they start to see all the hypocrisy that goes on in the religious institution. And then they begin to say, what's the point of this temple? Right. Right. It's really about what's going on inside, not about what's going on outside. And, you know, it's like, and there's some truth <laughs> in that. There's, there's truth tr in it. There's truth in it. Sometimes the temple can drive you crazy. Yep. Sometimes the organization, sort of like the fundraising, they always drive me crazy <laughs> when they're doing fundraising. Come on, can't we just worship God? I was trying to get some money, hold me by the ankles, get some money out of my pocket. Okay. But here's the, here's the point that I want to make is no, but then you have to go further, deeper. As you go deeper, you're going to see there is a really good purpose. If you understand it's maybe you never understood the real purpose of this temple. Right. And you know, I was thinking about this this morning, Raghunath, in terms of like, like, let's say you had the aliens coming in on the flying saucer. I always think about this. Cool. I know. <laughs> so that's why I knew you would enjoy this. And so, and they're flying around. They're here. <laughs> and, and, flying around. And like, imagine you were an alien in a flying saucer. I have. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this shouldn't be too difficult. <clears throat> and you were flying in and you were approaching a city. Mm. Like, let's say you're flying in to, let's say, Sri Rangam. Okay. This, this South temples. India, famous yeah. temple. Like okay. you would be flying into the city and your attention would, where would your attention go first as you're flying in? Uh, first to the dome. Yeah. To, or to the massive Gopuram. It's a massive, so, yeah, yeah Gopuram. So, There's a in other words, on the top or the in the entire city, a king decided we're going to build our, our most prominent architectural structure is going to be a temple that's dedicated to bringing the mind to Vishnu so that people can do exactly what we're hearing about in this book, right? Go into that place, engage all their senses, bring your mind to this purifying um, source so that we'll develop all the good qualities of kindness and generosity and compassion and and, and, and become, become more pure, closer to God, more loving towards God and more loving toward every living being. It's, an, it's, it's the purpose of life we're going to we're going to engage our resources to make that right in the very center center of the whole city. So if you were this alien coming in, you'd say you would understand something about the values of these people and, and, and how noble they are, mm. you know, just by the architecture and the establishment of this temple as the central thing. You go to Jaipur, you go to 
wherever you go to these, you know, Jagannath Puri, Vrindavan is nothing but temple, you know. Now imagine you were flying into New York City. In yeah. your, you know, let, let's say even just to make, now there's like all these skyscrapers, but let's say it was like 40, 50 years ago, it would be like, oh, Empire State Building, right? You just, Twin Towers, Chrysler Building, City Core Building. <laughs> yeah, City Core Building. <laughs> so, so you'd be flying in, you'd see that Empire State Building, and you would understand, okay, this is where this civilization is like really focused. Let's see what this, what does this teach what, us about what, their values? Like, what are they focused on? Yeah. yeah what are they focused and, and if you stopped and started interviewing the people, like we see your structure, tell us why you've built it and what, what this is about. Did your king, did your leader build it? Well, no, we don't really work that way. Um, this was just the people with the most money are able to build a building like this. Okay, and their purpose is to 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 foster you know higher values in the people. Is it no? It's really just a money making thing. <laughs> you know, like you want to build it as tall as you can, so you can put as many rooms in there as possible, and you rent those out, and you make a lot of money. Mm. Oh, okay. I guess I understand. Okay, okay that's about where your values saying. are. Right? <laughs> yeah, I guess I understand something about your civilization. You know. Yeah. So, so the temple is the idea with the temple is you. You engage all you, you engage wealth, you engage architect, architectural expertise, artistic expertise, um, all in placing God right in the middle, like all the ornamentation and all the, the you know the the architectural structure, the ornamentation, the ritual is all designed specifically as a therapy. You know, mm -hmm. that you go in there and now you're, you know, I, I walk out of this building and my mind's getting distracted in so many different ways. But when I walk in here, it's all working favorably to bring my mind right to that root of all existence so that I can purify that mind, develop these higher qualities, relieve myself of, of the bad thinking, which is really the bad karma, right? Like the bad thinking, the bad thinking loops that I'm stuck in and, and, and become a, a pure, better person connected to god connecting to every living entity the whole thing is designed to do that and that's why this text is saying if you clap your hands it, it's saying about dancing right now if we were to if we were the aliens flying in and looking at the dancing that's going on in this culture what, what we would see oh here's madonna dancing and, and thousands of people have come to see this right here's michael jackson dancing thousands and thousands you know they're filling up stadiums of people, people watching it on television. Here's Shakira dancing or whoever da dancing, right? Shakira it, can dance. Okay, and so, and so um, why is she dancing? Why is he dancing? They're glorifying themselves and essentially, they're, they're kind of showing like, look how great I am. And sure. people are saying, you are great. Yeah. And, and it excites me. Sure. Where, whereas the idea is the whole reason the temple is built is because we all have that propensity to dance. But when you put it in the temple in front of the deity, then you feel naturally your attention goes to the deity and no longer you're dancing to glorify yourselves. No longer are you dancing to, you know, attract attention and become the center yourself. No, you're dancing for the pleasure of the center of the root of all existence. It's, it's very interesting, isn't it? Yeah. You're dancing for Krishna. You're dancing for Krishna's place. You're not dancing for your beauty. You're not dressing yeah. up, putting on a costume for your beauty. You're doing it to glorify God. Very it's, interesting. And it's, it's a different shift. It's the exact same thing, but things are slightly shifted. The attention it. is slightly yeah. shifted and you get yeah. so much benefit and you build up your devotion instead of building up your ego. There you go. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so that's, that's the, why that's the, that's the shift in everything, isn't it? They we just have to make that one shift. Cultural arts, everything we do, as an offering to God instead of an offering to our ego. When I do it as an offering of, or a e, for our ego, our lives become more complicated. Oh, they, they can become like do. an impacted, painful, stressful, competitive. When we do it to serve God, we become free. The, all those knots become untied. We mm. become joyous. Mm. Mm. Be beautifully said, Raghunath. Beautifully said. So, so, so now let's go back to the Nectar Devotion or the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. What is Rupa Goswami doing here? He's saying, dear Acharya, dear Guru, when you're instructing your disciple how to practice sadhana bhakti, here's 64 ways you can do it. One of them is to dance in front of the deity, <laughs> right, in the temple. 
and, and why? Because when your disciple goes into that temple, naturally his your disciple already has the, de- the desire to dance. It's in there. You don't have to tell him never dance. You, you can tell him dance, but dance in the temple in front of the D. Do it a little bit every day. And, you, and when they dance there, all of the architecture, all of the ritual, all of the, everything is kind of naturally bringing you like, I'm dancing for Krishna. I'm dancing for Krishna. You know what I was thinking when I was thinking about this? Earlier you know what I was thinking when you said that, I was thinking like, there must be 60 ways to leave your love. I was thinking 64 ways to please Lord Krishna. Dance on, the, dance for the Lord, George. You work on that one. You work on that one. Here, go ahead and do a little project there, 64 ways. And so, so, um, so yeah, it's telling the guru, you, you can instruct her to say, oh, so what I was thinking was, I like to dance before the D. We were, um, when we went to Mayapur this year, you were sick one day in, in, uh, in little Karuna, Leti Kirtan, in the temple. Yeah, I missed that day. It's a special and, uh, day. I was dancing before the DD with Tara, and and it was just so satisfying. And of course, so that leaves an impression in the consciousness for her, yeah, for you, for me. and for everybody witnessing. Sometimes people aren't yeah. dancing, but they're witnessing. Just it. witnessing that's someone leaves, dancing. That's you know what I've had people come to me say, you know what, I saw the devotees dance, and something happened something joyful happened within my heart that's enough to leave the impression and that's why it's again it's from the orders of the spiritual master dance almost out of duty and then it becomes very normal that you want to dance and it has a benefit for everybody involved even or a skeptic onlooker yeah yeah it says a lot it it builds faith it creates faith witnessing someone else's devotion Sure. Creates faith. And And that enthusiasm comes from just being enthusiastic. And it's Mm. not, it's not fake. It's real because the, because you're a spiritual person, we can be um, enthusiastic for the New York giants or the New Jersey giants. I don't even know who it is anymore. Or, um, you know, New York York, giants, but they play in Jersey. Okay. You could be enthusiastic (laughs) for them and you could dress up like them or paint your body, the colors of the (laughs) team and being enthusiastic. It doesn't give you anything except paint on your body. Yeah. And you might be like really astute in understanding all the n- nuances of how good the giants are and there, but it doesn't give th- this type of enthusiasm for Krishna mm-hmm. releases one from all bonds of the material world. Whereas, you, well, you, you, you know, that's still, you can still paint yourself blue and red or whatever their colors are and hate the guy from the Jets or hate <laughs> the guy from the Oilers or hate the guy from. Yeah, you know, it, it. All of this is laid out in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. It's describing that there's, there's six hallmarks of pure devotional service, like six ways that it manifests in beautiful, powerful ways. And yes. sadhana bhakti, through sadhana bhakti, you get two of them, and then when that matures into bhava bhakti, you get four of them, and when it matures into prema bhakti, you get all all six of them. Give me them all. Yes. <laughs> well, I got it. <laughs> so uh, that, but that enthusiasm is is that is kind of the qualification for it, right? When one yeah. feels an eagerness, when one, um, and and actually, you know, that's what Rupa Goswami is saying too. He's saying that when this sadhana bhakti is executed with a genuine longing, then it has the potential to bring forward bhava bhakti and ultimately prema bhakti. And so the temple is designed to keep us focused on that and to help develop that general longing. We get that through, we go to the temple, we hear the stories about Krishna, right? We associate with the devotees of Krishna. We see the deity of Krishna. That it's to help us get that, that genuine longing. You, I you want do. pure devotion, right? And I you develop that. enthusiasm by one, associating that with enthusiastic people, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's why I like you. You're enthusiastic yeah. for bhakti, right? So you associate with people who are enthusiastic and the other way to become enthusiastic is Mara. Just be enthusiastic. That's something you can actually turn on. Dance in front of the deity. Dance in front of the deities. Clap your hands in a kirtan. There's nothing worse than you're trying to lead a kirtan. There's some guy just like uh, looking out. If you want to experience it, you at least got to go through the motions at first. Clap your hands and smile. Engage the senses. And guess what? Just by doing it on the orders of guru, I'm just going to clap and sing. Someone next to you may be having the worst day of their life 
And eventually you might start smiling because you're clapping and that might affect them. And so you may have saved a life. You could have saved the life. They may have taken their life. If you, they may have taken their life, but due to your clapping and dancing. Yeah. So, but what I was going to say, Ronald was, so I enjoyed dancing there. We danced in, I remember we danced nicely in the, uh, Shivasangan, over here, Raghunath. Over I here. am. I'm here. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at your plants. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Beautiful um, plants. Beautiful Shri- plants. Thank you, Shivasangan. We danced there, oh, and we had yes. beautiful dancing. Sometimes the dance is not always. I can't relate to it in the kirtans. Sometimes, sometimes yeah. And I, and I'd say this. I think the women dance more nicely than the men. Well, it depends what men. I've seen some bad women. In dancers. general, I'm saying. In general, and you know why? I, in my own opinion. Because the men don't know how to dance. They were no. never trained how to dance. Well, it's because the women dance together in harmony. You know, like... The men just do the cross the wrists, swing each other around, <laughs> and like take out four Or just people. get like in a big huddle and just like... And they think, and, and I think that <laughs> style, if you want to call that a style, it's less conducive for, for bringing the mind to Krishna. Whereas this... And when we read about Sri Chaitanya... And the dancing, like for instance, we read about the dancing that took place in front of the deity of Lord Jagannath on the at the Rathiatra festivals in the yeah. Chaitanya Charitamrita. When we read there, we hear that there was lead singers for the kirtans, and there were also lead, 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 dan- lead, lead dancers, dancers, lead dancers, which indicates to me, I would assume that it means that they were dancing in harmony. They were dancing in together, you know. So and what I do think- we do about Mara? She doesn't dance so much. She's not like maybe you know, it's because she's not around that kind of dancing enough. You know, where like people are dancing together. I think we really got it. This some be- people it's just not their thing to dance so much. And she, you know, Mary's very introverted. I know but that, you don't. That makes. What do you think? What, what <laughs> should she do about that? Can she, can the she get pure devotional service and not dance? Well, there's 64 items there, so <laughs> it doesn't have to be all of them. You got sixty-three more. Is knitting <laughs> it's, it's, one of okay. them? We'll eliminate it's that one for Krishna. One of Will them. Will you clap your hands at least in front of the deities? Will you do that? <laughs> <laughs> and um, but but in any case, I think that's a really beautiful thing when people dance nicely. And there's one more point I want to make here today, Rogan. We only got five minutes left. We just did this one question, and we should wrap right. up this question. But let to wrap up this question: Is it the same if you're not in the temple? The whole point of the temple is to bring your mind to Krishna. So if you're anywhere and your mind is in, you're dancing for Krishna's pleasure, it's the same thing. The temple is to help you mm. think that way and feel that way. And if you're thinking that way and feeling that way, then you're then the deity is everywhere. The deity is in your heart. The deity is with you all the time. Again, that's the point in going to the temple is to to you know the the neophyte devotee only sees God in the temple, right? Mm. The advanced devotee is seeing that deity everywhere in the heart of themselves in the heart of every living being you know wherever they look they see and, and so they they feeling the presence of god everywhere when they're dancing and they're clapping their hands it's just as good as doing it in the temple because the purpose of the temple has been achieved they're, it's, they're doing it for the pleasure of krishna in 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 absorption and with thought absorbed in krishna that's pure bhakti right? but i wanted to say this ragna what what did you want to say and this is something that you and I have been talking about recently too, is that when you and I got into bhakti, the thing was you moved into a temple. So first thing, before you move to the temple, there's a little shraddha, there's a little faith. Yeah, you're, not just, you're not just saying, I need a place to stay. <laughs> Hopefully not. And then, and then the next thing that comes along is sadhu sangha. You begin to like to associate with these devotees and that faith is increasing. And when you get to the point where you're like, I want to practice this, that's called bhajana kriya. We would move into a temple at that point and and all these 64 items, we would engage in them. Mm. They, they were prescribed for us. We would also get a guru at that time, and they would personally prescribe different, different um, practices of bhakti for us. And we would see that the devotees' spiritual lives would accelerate at that point. They would take mm. off. Whereas now people don't live in the temples. All the devotees, all, you know, all the people that are coming now, they rarely move into the temple. And we need to see that they get the instructions in these practices effectively. Otherwise, it kind of stagnates at that point. You know, the, every everyone that's practicing bhakti needs to have a clear idea. Here's the practices that I'm focusing on. 
for this purpose. You know, here's how much I'm going to do it, when I'm going to do it. They, that's that's how the guru works. Mm. That, 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 that those are the kind of instructions that they're giving, so that one advances. I think they should. I think they should have invite people over their house, and they should sing together and make prashad. That's one and, thing. And read the Gita together. But that's but a, sometimes people want way. want more specific instructions too. And I think we need well, to yes. see somehow that they get those. That I'm just let, saying this is for people who aren't living necessarily in the temple. They can I understand. have home but programs. I'm, but a lot of people aren't going to have a home program. They're going to need some more personalized instruction. Or are you Which just way? putting them all into that box? Or are you putting them into that box so that they need more personal instruction? That's a bigger box. <laughs> is it a bigger box? <laughs> yeah, that's a much bigger box. <laughs> 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 uh, your box is within that box. <laughs> or is yours within mine? No, it's not. It was the other way. I don't know. All right. So so I think we answered the question. I, we did we spent the we, whole we got time. one question at least. Uh, yeah. That's it. We're done. It's a good question. It was a great question. It it, it needed to be talked about. I appreciated the question and I appreciate right. what you shared, Ramana. Okay, good. Thank you. That's it, Mara. There we go. So That's what are you it, doing? Are you doing a concert? You're not doing a concert. You're just doing a book thing. I'm doing a yoga workshop, sir. Right. Like I used to day in the old, do in the old days. A yoga workshop. We got a big group of yogis up there in Boston. This is where I met Catherine A. and uh, Martine. Oh yeah, yeah. This, a matter of fact, a matter of fact where's last Catherine time I A. Lately? Here, is she back in Boston? I don't know. I don't know if she's she's, she's on out. somewhere. She's on the chat board somewhere. But this is where I met Catherine A. and Martine, and this is, we did. I remember we were doing a Super Soul Sacred Sangha there from there one morning. Oh yeah, as well. Anyway, or I'm going to be at uh, Bridge Nine Records today, hoping to see some of the regulars. I'm going to do some program in Braintree. I would like to. You know what I would like to do is say, okay, I'm coming to Boston. Let's get all the Super Soul people and let's have a kirtan in the park. That's how what about I like in how about in Peabody? You know, in Peabody, in Worcester, Gloucester. <laughs> sandwich is that is there a city called sandwich oh. well, thanks for joining in, us everybody uh, Salem. we're waiting we're waiting for those Amazon reviews if you haven't done it please go to Amazon and review my book uh, give it a good review I forgot to say that <laughs> it's like when people always say get, make sure you go out there and vote but they really mean go out and vote for the politician that we want you to vote for they're not really you know, it's, 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 ever notice that Go vote. It's important to vote. I've got the sticker to vote. Oh, really? really I'm going to vote vote for the guy that you hate. How about that? Don't vote. (laughs) Don't vote. Oh, okay. You just made a mistake. Don't vote. Please don't vote. Which state are you in to see if it matters or not? Um, Listen, I'm... I'm... uh, Did you review your own book, Raghu? Good question, I remember. I did not. That's a little tacky. That might be tacky. That would be... Or it could be sort of like, you know what? I really like this book. I wrote it. And that's what I think. Well, probably. But I did give one re- star reviews to the fake Ray Capo books that are out there now on Amazon, down. created down. by AI. Even that helps the algorithm, though, Ruggler. If you help their algorithm. Do you think so? Do you think know. I'm helping their algorithm? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Don't Unless I'm algorithm. hurting the Ray Capo algorithm. Oh, yeah, a bunch of people hate him. They got a bunch of one stars. <laughs> yes, you keep them all guy. five stars. Loser. I'm really confused what to do with the AI. The AI world is already freaking me out. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh. Anyway, anyway, please go there and give it a review if you haven't. And I know which ones, I know which one of you have already. And I know which one's naughty. Sarah Koreski, you have not done it yet. You know, Achuta, you have not done it yet. Martine, Shia Shastri, I'm calling you out. They're like, I want to read it first. No, that's not an excuse. That's not important. (laughs) Reading it is not important to give the review. You can. But Stuart didn't even review it. I'll do it, did you? I will do it. Oh, will you do it? I will. See, you're setting the example here, Pursue. If you're not reviewing it, Saraswati, have you reviewed that book yet? She's like, yes, I have. 